the last new subject. Oh, this is sad. I know. I think we're going to Can relive the memories. Here we go. We've talked about an RC circuit. We've talked about an LR circuit. We have not yet talked about an LC circuit. <laughs> So we have a capacitor and, and an inductor in a circuit together. An LC circuit. This is at time t is less than zero. We're going to start with a charged capacitor. So the capacitor will have energy stored in the electric field of that capacitor. We're going to close the switch. at t is approximately equal to zero. Actually, but t is perfectly equal to zero. Why not? <laughs> now, what happens? We close the switch. Give me a brief description of what happens, Zach. Current flows. That's, we'll start with that. Current flows. <laughs> Great. Current is going to flow. Now, as current flows, what happens to the charge on the capacitor, Jenkins? It decreases. It decreases. As current flows, current is going to increase, right? As the charge decreases. Then we're going to have current flowing through the inductor, right? Now, that means what's going to happen to the magnetic field Sorry. On the induct in the inductor, Nitch? Um, it increases. It's going to increase, OK. So we go from having an electric field in the capacitor where there's energy stored in that electric field of the capacitor. And slowly over time, that energy is going to decrease and we're going to have that energy stored in the inductor. So we're going to go, in, from, go from having all energy stored in the capacitor and that energy is going to decrease and we'll have energy stored in the inductor, right? Then there'll be no energy stored in the capacitor. All the energy will be stored in the inductor. Then, that is going to cause current to flow, which is going to cause energy to go from the inductor to the capacitor. And then we're going to have energy go from the capacitor to the inductor, and then from the inductor to the capacitor. Oh, I like Yes? I have a question. Just uh -huh. Why does uh, the, wait, what's L again? The inductor. Why does it look like a curly, like, screw thing? Uh, because it is basically the shape of a coil. This is an inductor. It's a, if you, it's a solenoid, but it's also an inductor. So basically what you have is you have energy stored in the capacitor, which then is going to go into the inductor, which then is going to go back to the capacitor and then back to the inductor. Oh no. And it makes, it makes sense that the last subject we would cover in this class would be the same as this last, last uh, <laughs> subject we covered in mechanics. No. And it would be simple. Simple harmonic motion. Wouldn't you just like freeze at 50? No. Nope. What you would have here, just like the dance of the pendulum, what you have is here, we have all gravitational potential energy. Kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, just keeps going back and forth, right? That's the same thing you have in this circuit. You have energy stored in the capacitor, then it's going into the inductor and going back and forth. Black. Are we going to talk about resistance in the wire? So, one of the things that we make sure is that we point out is that the resistance of all of the wires is equal to zero. The resistance of the wires is equal to zero. If the resistance were not equal to zero, this would be called an RLC circuit, which is not a part of this particular class. It's not a part of this curriculum. I will point out that there are those of you who are going to come back from the AP test, you're going to be like, but there was an RLC circuit on the AP test. No, there wasn't. They had a circuit where there was a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor in it. But it wasn't an RLC circuit because they had it separated out. And we'll go through, when we, we're reviewing, we'll go through some examples of that. Oh, it'll be fun. Don't you worry. Yes, so. Does the capacitor like, wait until it gets a certain charge? We're, we're going we're to walk through more specifics right now. Okay. So, to review. Uh oh. I don't know. That might be the same desktop picture. We'll find out. I hope not. Oh my god, first time. Is this? Yeah, it was long. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is uh, from a dance party at our house in the evening. We got out the flashlights, we danced. My god. Okay. So I would suggest that you open up your textbook 
to the page, page 1017. I'm going to walk through a bunch of figures on page 1017. It will be very helpful for understanding what's going on here. So we're going to go back to a simple harmonic motion example that uh, you're more, much more familiar with, which is a mass spring system. When the object is located, when the mass is located right here, the velocity is zero. Therefore, all of the energy is stored where, class? Spring. In the spring, elastic potential energy. So, slowly or over time, that mass will go get to the fact where it's in equilibrium position. Now, all the energy is stored in kinetic, kinetic energy. energy. So we've switched. We have now elastic potential energy. We're now all kinetic energy. And then notice we're over here. We're back to elastic potential energy. It's all elastic potential energy. But notice we're on the opposite side of the equilibrium position. And that's an important thing to realize in just a moment. We're now back to all kinetic energy, but the velocity's in the opposite direction. And then we come back to the original position. That is simple harmonic motion you're more familiar with. So now we come to the LC circuit. Initially, all the energy is stored on the capacitor. There is zero current in the circuit. Current is going to flow as soon as we close the switch. It's going to flow until we get to the point where the current is a maximum, and the current is clockwise through this circuit. All the energy is stored in the magnetic field of the inductor. There is zero energy stored in the capacitor. Then we're going to have all the energy will be dissipated from the uh, inductor will now be stored in the capacitor. But notice the direction of the electric field and where the positive and negative charges were stored. Are they the same? No. no. They've been reversed, just like the mass was on the opposite side of the equilibrium position. Okay. Now all the energy stored in the electric field, zero energy in the magnetic field. And we now have a Good morning. One <laughs> mm -hmm. You've got to be kidding me. Cedar Point. No. I'm kidding. Northville High School. $55.50. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> so, notice, sorry, we, we have a lot to do. Sorry, notice the current at the second position was clockwise. Now it's counterclockwise, okay? Just like the velocity was moving in the opposite direction. So this is simple harmonic motion, and you're already very familiar with it. It's just that the whole idea of simple harmonic motion and the circuits is kind of weird for you. Here we go. We have our RC, I'm sorry, LC circuit. So notice, at the total energy is going to be the energy stored in the capacitor plus the energy stored in the inductor. The energy stored in the capacitor, we have a couple of different equations we could use. The total energy, we'll use uh, Q squared over 2C plus 1 half LI squared. So this is the total energy at any time. Right? Q and I change. The charge on the capacitor and the current in the circuit are the things that change as a function of time. Note, you can have a current maximum. If you have a current maximum, that means that the charge on the capacitor would be equal to zero. Right? This whole piece would be at a maximum, and this would be zero. You could also have an instance where the charge is at a maximum. If that is true, that means that the current is equal to zero. Going back and forth, just talking about the figures that we had in the, um, in we were just talking about. So we could have, at certain times, all the energy could be stored in the capacitor, so it would be Q max squared divided by 2C, or you could have all the energy stored in the inductor, it would be 1 half L times I, the current maximum. So looking at this, we have the total current. We can now take the derivative of this whole thing. The derivative of the energy as a function of time is equal to the derivative. Now we have the derivative of this, q squared over 2c plus 1 half li squared. Now, because the resistance of this is equal to 0, 
that means that there is zero energy lost in this circuit. Now, I know that that's never going to be true, but it's just like flying through the vacuum that you, you can breathe. It gives us a good place to talk about and to work with this circuit. Considering that fact, the derivative of the total energy as a function of time for this circuit class should be equal to zero, right? Because the energy shouldn't be changing. So this whole thing should be equal to zero. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's take the derivative of this. The derivative with respect to time, well, we know charge is changing. So we get uh, zero is equal to, this right here is going to be equal to 2q divided by 2c times dq dt. Just take the derivative of that. Plus 1 half times L times uh, 2i times di dt. Okay, let's see. Zero is equal to, we have Q over C times Q dt plus we have um, Li times what we have left, di dt. Somebody come in? Oh, thank you. I've, enough's going on. Thank you. Okay, so now we have dq dt. Well, we know dq dt is equal to what? That's the definition of current. So we have q over c times current plus l times i. Well, if current equals dq dt, that means di dt is equal to the second derivative of charge as a function of time. Okay. So now we have the second derivative. So we can say, um, let's see, zero equals q over c. And I'm sorry, I do try to be careful with my q's for my c's and my i's here. So this is. Oh, thank you. So this is q. Okay, so now we have, um, let's get rid of current. So q times c plus l, the second derivative of charge, is a function of time. Oh, let's see, let's just take a, we have q over c, negative equals l, second derivative of charge is a function of time. Um, so we have the second derivative of charge as a function of time is equal to negative 1 over L times C times Q. Again, this is a C, this is an L. Believe it or not, I'm actually done. <laughs> this is the aha moment. This is the, oh, I get it, Mr. Palmer. That's like. <laughs> I, I, I'm waiting for somebody to verbalize that other than here. Give me a little bit more. Wow. No, no, I need to know what it is. It's either like other simple motion equation like a second derivative of position. Is equal to? The second derivative of position as a function of time is equal to? Like omega squared. Omega squared. Negative omega squared. Times x. So the angular frequency is equal to what? Nitage. Oh, um, you could. It'd be q over l c times x and the square root of. Okay, well, just put negative omega squared x equals negative 1 over LC times Q. I'm just looking for omega. Okay. I'll just 
right about it. <laughs> what is omega plus L? Uh, square root of one over L. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I raise your hand. <laughs> The angular frequency of an LC circuit is uh, more commonly 1 over the square root of LC, which is the same thing, but 1 over the square root of L, the inductance, times the capacitance. In other words, we have the equation for position as a function of time. It was equal to the amplitude times a cosine of omega t plus phi. In other words, we have the charge as a function of time. Well, that is equal to the charge maximum because that's what the amplitude is, times a cosine of omega, well, that's 1 over the square root of LC, times T plus whatever we have for phi. Now, for the example we just went through, at time T equals 0, the charge initial was equal to Q max, which means that phi was equal to what class? Zero. Zero. Because the cosine, we need the cosine of this value, at time t equals zero, we need the cosine of zero so that we have one to get the q max. So we have phi would be equal to zero degrees. In other words, the charge as a function of time would be equal to q max multiplied by the cosine of one over the square root of LC times one of T. Well, that's the charge as a function of time. That's half of it. That is the charge on the capacitor, right? We could get the charge as a function of time. We also need the current as a function of time in this LC circuit. The current as a function of time, then, would just be equal to the derivative of the charge as a function of time, or the derivative of Q max times a cosine of 1 over the square root of LC times T. Please take the derivative for me. Mr. Pete. All right. So it would be sine of, well, we could do the derivative of the inside first. So that would be 1 over the square root of LC multiplied by Negative sine of one over. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Q max. We missed the Q max. The beginning. So with the current as a function of time is going to be equal to the charge maximum divided by the square root of L C the negative of times the sine of t divided by the square root of L. So we have solved for the current as a function of time, the charge as a function of time in our simple harmonic motion. We have proven that the LC circuit is in simple harmonic motion by getting all the way to here. Remember that the total energy stored in the LC circuit is going to be stored in the capacitor and the inductor. At any time t, it could be stored in one or the other. And therefore, the total energy would be equal to the charge maximum squared divided by 2c would also be equal to 1 half L times the current maximum squared.